title today is Gastrocheometry. All right, so we've got a couple of loose ends I want to uh, I want to tie up here. So um, just some some random that's that's the word random information that you guys need to know about gases. The first one is something called standard temperature pressure, um, which is referred to often as STP. All right, so if we are doing a problem, and in the problem it says that uh, a certain gas is at STP, what does that mean that it's at, at STP? Well, standard temperature pressure, standard temperature, and pressure, And you will see this in problems abbreviated as STP is zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Okay, so if it tells you that a certain gas is at STP, that means the temperature of that gas is zero degrees Celsius and the pressure of that gas is one atm or one atmosphere. All right, now at STP, getting a little zealous with my capitals, at STP, one mole of any gas occupies 22.4 liters. All right, so it doesn't matter about the nature of the gas, what molecule of gas it is. If it's nitrogen, oxygen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter what the gas is. If it is at STP, that means that if it is zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, it's going to take up 22.4 liters of space. All right, so the conversion for this is 22.4 liters per mole. That's what it will look like. Okay, so if a gas is at STP, one mole of it is going to take up 22.4 liters of space. All right, and then I tried to say this um, in the gas laws video. I'm going to write this down right now when I was trying to describe the balloon thing. At constant temperature pressure, at constant temperature and pressure equal moles of any gas equal moles of any gas will have, will, no, occupy, occupy the same volume constant temperature and pressure, um, equal moles of any gas 
occupy the same volume. Or like I said in the video from yesterday about gas laws, if you have three different balloons of different gases and uh, they are all at the same temperature, the same pressure, and the same volume, then you can make the assumption that you have equal numbers of moles of all of those gases. Okay, let's do some stoichiometry with gases now. So we're just going to fine tune our stoichiometry thing. So let's write down a problem. Sodium azide. Sodium azide. NaN3 decomposes in auto airbags. to form nitrogen gas. Calculate the volume of N2. Celsius. It's pretty hot. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It's pretty hot temperature. Yes, an explosion though. And 823 millimeters of mercury by the decomposition. decomposes in auto airbags to form nitrogen gas, right? So that's what will inflate the airbag. Um, calculate the volume of N2 generated at 80 degrees Celsius and 823 millimeters of mercury by the decomposition of 60 grams of sodium azide. Hmm. Well, this is going to be a nice little combination problem that we've got here. We've got to do some stoichiometry and we have to use some PV equals NRT as well. Huh. So we're given a quantity of sodium azide, and we've got to calculate a quantity of nitrogen gas. So if we're going from one thing to another, that automatically, one compound to another compound, or actually in this case, element, um, that means that we've got to do stoichiometry here. We we're we we're going to have to use a mole ratio. But not only do we have to use a mole ratio, uh, we are being asked to calculate the volume of the gas. And, um, hmm, so we've got a pressure, we've got a temperature, and if we use stoichiometry, we're going to be able to get a number of moles. So, what are we going to be able to use then with those pieces of information to calculate the volume? We will use PV equals NRT. We will use the ideal gas law. Uh, but our first job is to figure out if six, we've got 60.0 grams of this stuff and it decomposes, how much N2 in terms of moles of N2 are we going to make? <coughs> or can be made. So our first thing here is, you guys, we need a balanced equation. So what the heck is going on here? Well, we've got two sodium azides. So two moles 
of sodium azide, and of course, um, this would have to be given to you in the problem. I wouldn't expect that you know this, um, and that is going to be a solid. And it's going to decompose, so we've got a single reactant going to a couple of products. We're going to make two moles of sodium, elemental sodium, sodium metal. I don't want this to come into contact with any water. Um, and we're also going to make three moles of nitrogen gas. And this N2 gas is what is going to inflate our auto airbag. Okay, so there it is. There's our balanced equation. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to do, because it's asking us for volume, we're going to do the stoichiometry first and the volume second. Okay, and we will have vice versa of these kinds of problems as well, where uh, we are given everything to calculate the number of moles of one reaction product, one reaction component, and then we've got to go back and figure out moles or grams of another one. And, and so in that case, we'd use or gas laws first and stoichiometry second, but that's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo too right now. Um, but you'll see as as we do the problems. All right, so our first step here. In the end, we're looking for volume, so we're going to use PV equals NRT last. We're going to start with the stoichiometry. So we've got 60.0 grams of sodium azide. Okay, that is my given, and I want to figure out how much N2 I'm going to make. All right, um, so first I'm going to calculate the moles of N2, and then I will use the number of moles to calculate my volume. All right, so I've got 60 grams of sodium azide, and um, I'm going to need to know its molar mass, which is 65.02 grams of sodium azide per mole of sodium azide. Okay, and that will get rid of my grams. Okay, I'm given moles. But what I really want is moles. What I'm looking for is moles of N2. And then once I have them, then I can use PV equals NRT to figure out volume of that gas. Okay, what is my mole ratio? I am in a 3 to 2 mole ratio. Okay, there we go. That's going to go. And so you guys, that then will give me moles of nitrogen gas, and my moles of nitrogen gas come out to be 1.38 moles of N2. Okay, so according to this, um, according to this, I am going to produce 1.38 moles of this gas, but that's not what my problem is asking me for. My problem is asking me how much volume will this many moles of gas occupy? So in order for me to figure that out, I have to use the ideal gas law. I have to use PV equals NRT. That is the only way for me to figure out the volume that that amount will occupy. So that volume is all by itself on one side. You don't have to do that though. It's not necessary. I'm just going to do it. Okay, so that means that it's going to be volume is equal to NRT over P. Or I could just plug it in just like it is here. 
It's completely up to you. Okay. So, volume is equal to. All right, you guys, how many moles do I have? Ooh, I just got a good idea. Why don't I? I'm going to color code our formula. V equals, I'm not going to have enough colors, but N, I'm going to leave R the same color. T, uh-oh, guess what I'm going to use? It's green over P, just for fun. Okay, so volume is equal to, all right, you guys, what's my number of moles? 1.38 R. 0.0821. What's my temperature? 80. Can it be in Celsius? Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273 to 80. And that puts that in Kelvin. Like it has to be because of my units for R. And I'm going to put all of it over the pressure. My pressure is 823. So what I'm going to do is if I just divide that number by what? That gives me my pressure in ATM, 823 divided by 760. Um, let's do that conversion real, real quick and easily. I have 823, just so you see it, millimeters. Oh, you're not going to see it in green, are you? 823 millimeters of mercury and one ATM for every 760 millimeters of mercury. Would we agree? Yeah. So 823 divided by 760, and then we've got that thing in ATM. All right, you guys, so if you do this math correctly here, what should your volume turn out to be? Your volume should turn out to be 36.9 liters of N2 gas. 37 liters, that's pretty big. There's a lot of space. All right, there we go. Who's ready to practice tomorrow?